Let's now talk about Afghanistan. Three months since the Taliban's takeover, there is no semblance of governance and to nobody's surprise. There's a lack of resources and funds, there's an unfolding humanitarian crisis and there's a growing security threat for Central Asia. America does not want to have anything to do with this. It has moved on to work on another mess perhaps. This one, the crisis in Afghanistan, is now for its neighbors to deal with. Afghanistan is now our problem. Some countries are trying to solve it. India, for instance, New Delhi convened a meeting of national security advisors today, NSAs, national security advisors. NSAs of Central Asian nations gathered in the Indian capital to chalk out a strategy to deal with a new reality in Afghanistan. Chairing this meet was the national security advisor of India, Ajit Doval. In attendance were the NSAs of seven Central Asian nations, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Missing from the meeting were two immediate neighbors of Afghanistan, Pakistan and China. India, by the way, invited both of them despite its differences with them. Both China and Pakistan were invited. They decided to skip the meeting. China cited scheduling issues and Pakistan did not even bother to explain. Evidently, peace in Afghanistan does not suit them. So the others met. India focused on the security challenges for Afghanistan's neighbors. Iran raised the refugee crisis and the need for an inclusive government. Kazakhstan highlighted the deteriorating economic situation. Tajikistan brought up cross-border terrorism and drug trafficking. Kyrgyzstan pointed out the resurgence of terror groups in Afghanistan. Russia, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan called for joint efforts to restore peace in the country. Listen to some of the remarks. We all have been keenly watching the developments in that country. These have important implications, not only for the people of Afghanistan, but also for its neighbors and the region. This is the time for close consultations amongst us, greater cooperation and interaction and coordination among the regional countries. Today, Afghanistan is involved in terrorism, poverty and misery, unfortunately. Basically, in Afghanistan, you have just crisis, the crisis of migration and refugees. And the solution comes only through the formation of an inclusive government with the participation of all ethnic groups. And therefore, we hope we would be able to determine who would be the fourth, where and who would be the, who would host the fourth round. And also, and also we would be able to come up with ideas with what mechanism we can resolve the issues in Afghanistan. We will help the speediest restoration of long-lasting peace in that country. Multilateral meetings of the Secretaries of Security Council on the Afghan issue is important format that helps us to discuss the whole package of complex issues linked to the development in Afghanistan on the highest level. It also helps us to elaborate practical measures to counter challenges and threats emanating from the Afghan territory. The dialogue was followed by bilaterals. The representatives of all seven nations held individual meetings with NSA Doval. Then they jointly called on the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. Soon after this meeting concluded, a very important statement was released. It's been called the Delhi Declaration on Afghanistan, a joint declaration by India and the seven countries that attended. A copy of the statement is on your screen, and this is what it says. Number one, Afghanistan's territory should not be used for sheltering, training, planning, or financing any terrorist acts. Number two, there should be cooperation against radicalization, extremism, separatism, drug trafficking in the region. Number three, there should be an open and truly inclusive government that represents the will of the people of Afghanistan. Number four, the United Nations has a central role to play in Afghanistan and its continued presence must be preserved. It's a very important point. The UN cannot wash its hands of Afghanistan. And number five, ensuring that the fundamental rights of women, children and minority communities are not violated. Well, this is what the declaration says. It sounds promising, but the challenge lies in its implementation, its execution, turning these pledges into reality. That's the tough part. And for that, all stakeholders will have to build some sort of leverage over the Taliban. It's not going to be easy, not with players like Pakistan, ready to throw a spanner in the works.
the Taliban still consider Pakistan as their mentor and counselor. Earlier today, a Taliban delegation led by acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Mutaki landed in Islamabad. What for? To attend a Troika Plus dialogue hosted by Pakistan. Very interesting timing. Pakistan meeting the Taliban on the same day as India discusses peace in Afghanistan. Guess who else will be part of this Pakistani meeting? The envoys of China, Russia and the United States. The talks will begin on Thursday and according to the Taliban's more fast spokesperson, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, yes they have one. These talks will focus on Afghanistan's economy, trade, transit and the refugee crisis. What does this tell you? That China and Pakistan have a coordinated policy for Afghanistan. They skipped the dialogue in New Delhi to host a parallel dialogue in Islamabad. They want to run the show. One wants clout among terror groups. The other wants minerals and geopolitical leverage. The road to peace in Afghanistan will have obstacles called Pakistan and China. Make no mistake. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.